Hello artists, how are you today? Stephanie once again coming to you here from the banks of the Trinity River. We are working on a new project. This is the book that I um, put together. I have almost all these pages. I have a few more pages that I need to reinforce, but uh, other than that, I am ready to go. Now this, um, this ABC challenge was initially meant to be a, a drawing a day type of thing. But you know, I really want to be able to put a little bit more time into things. And so we're going to do um, a page on Wednesdays and Saturdays like normal. And I decided to kind of mix it up instead of just doing animals, I am doing metaphors. So um, yeah, ants in his pants. And we've got uh, apple of his eye. So uh, what I want to do real quick though is um, show you. I did these on the live feed this morning, but uh, it was upside down, so we're going to show you again. <clears throat> now you can do this however you want to. You can do animals, you can do flowers, you could do uh, places, you could do anything you want to. And you do not have to freehand draw. Um, I just think that it gives it such a unique personality and it won't be anything that you'll be able to really achieve as far as, um, you know, really creating something original. But go for it. If you want to create a collage, you are more than welcome to. You do not have to do metaphors. I just thought it was really a fun, uh, it, it really got my creative energy going. So you do not have to do metaphors. You could do, like I said, just use the ABCs as an inspiration point to go from. You don't have to do animals, but I am going to show you how to do some animals that begin with the letter A. Now, uh, I know I've said this a couple times, but this is inspired by Deb Weirs. This drawing style is really inspired by her. And she has some great um, classes over at karabullockart.com. And, um, you know, you do have to pay for the classes. Uh, and just a, a quick disclaimer, I haven't done the whole class on her fun little animals that she does uh, because I didn't want to get influenced too heavily by her. I am already, you know, can see the fun and whimsy and the lightness of it, uh, but it does not have her really distinct style, which is really awesome, really, really fun artwork. You can find her also on Facebook. You can find her on, um, uh, I think she does Instagram too. So what I'm doing here is notice how I'm holding my pen, right? Uh, it's a very loose style and that's how we kind of get some fun shapes happening, some fun stuff occurring. So I'm going to show you how to draw the ant first, which you'll, you'll see in the video how I did it, but I will be speeding up through it. I mean, we got to have another hand here and another hand back over here or arm, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right. So for an ant, it's basically three circles, three circles. And then, um, here we've got, you know, some fun little shoes. What is it, Oz? Is it Ryan? You know, and then we've got to do some little eyes. Just two simple lines there. Kind of a fun, fun nose and a big smile. And um, <clears throat> let's see here. I kind of have to move my pen here a little bit. So what supplies I'm using is, uh, this is a Signo Uniball 207 Impact. Uh, it is a medium point gel pen. You can use any gel pen that you like to use. Um, this is a water soluble gel pen. So, um, you know, you just have to test and see if yours is. So the fun thing about doing water soluble, he looks kind of like a grumpy old man, doesn't he? The fun thing about using water soluble is that you can take a little bit of water on your brush and you can start to move that ink. 
Now, this is a mixed media sketchbook. So uh, the ink really does go into those pores quite a bit and um, the pores of the paper. But you can get some movement out of it still and then you can come back here and you know, just put in some more ink if you'd like to. And we're just kind of doing some shading on him. Now, as you can see, again, even my paintbrush, I'm keeping fairly loose here. And um, try to give him some definition in his little pieces and parts. So what supplies that you'll need to do something like this? This is a gel pen. Uh, you can use, you know, of course, a paintbrush is awesome. And... Um, go here and we'll do a little shading under his feet now you could put shoelaces on him I'm just doing a quick sketch of a drawing here and uh, now here's where you can also come in with a little bit extra color too you could bring in your watercolor paints if I can see if I can find them real quick this Arteza set is great um, it's a nice uh, mid-priced product that does have really nice vivid colors and you have a lot of colors in this set so you can bring in some color to our little dude and uh, you know it's just kind of all about having fun so if you want to put pants on your aunt, well, make him stand up straight and, you know, put pants on him. He's not a perfect guy, but look how much fun he is. He's, he's just a blast. And, you know, that's, that's what this is all about, is really lightening up and having fun. Now, I've gone through, of course, and <clears throat> I did, you know, the project that I'll show you here coming up. I did it very detailed and... Um, because that's what I, I, I like to do. I, I like to really have, um, I like to make finished pieces of art instead of just doing kind of a, a drawing. Now you can do this two ways, of course, whatever you have time for. If you only have time to do a quick drawing, then do a quick drawing. Um, and you can do it in a sketchbook. You could do it on a substrate. Uh, you can do it, you know, on any type of substrate, piece of paper, um, a little canvas, one of the canvas panels would be great. An actual canvas itself would be wonderful. So there's a lot of options. Don't limit yourself just because I'm doing it in an altered book to feel like you have to do it in an altered book. All right, so there's my ant guy. Um, and, you know, I don't know exactly what an ant eater looks like, but I know it's something kind of like this. I'm gonna put some big eyes on him. He's got a big, long snout. I know he's got some big legs here. Now, see how loose I'm keeping my pen? You can also do this uh, with uh, your opposite hand. You know, bring in that practice that we did a, a while back of, you know, drawing with your opposite hand. It's a great way to really loosen up and enjoy the process. So this is going to be his back leg here. And we're going to have a leg here. And I'm just doing these as quick sketches to give you examples of how you can um, make these little creature guys. You know. Yes. Yes. And then if you wanted to, you can put spots on them. I don't think ant eaters really have spots, but he might. All right, we got a circle here for an eyeball. We leave a little speck of white in there. And you could do an eyebrow here. And you can do just kind of a little lip there. Something fun. These are kind of animal doodles. Um, definitely, definitely. And 
you know, it's fun to practice and play with them, maybe even before you get into your book. Um, I had too much water there. You either get too much water, so right there I'm kind of soaking up the water a little bit and moving it around. And again, uh, on, on, you know, an acrylic painted background, it will move quicker and easier, see? But if you have a wet paper with this mixed media paper, it'll move really nicely for you. And we're just putting some fun spots on this guy. Because why not, right? Right, right, right. He, should, he deserves to have some spots. Because he's a polka dotted anteater. Am I being precise with this? No, not at all. Um, and can you still see how fun it is to play with this guy? Yeah, it's totally fun. The crocodile was pretty fun, or the, the alligator. Um, Do your shading underneath. And again, this would be an ideal place to bring in your watercolors or your acrylic paints. And really, you know, I, I like him with a bigger little mushy stomach. And I would suggest to do these in pen instead of pencil. You don't need to do it in pencil. Um, if something you know doesn't work, you always have the ability to gesso over it. Or, um, you know, if you're doing it in a book like I am, maybe do a couple practice sketches before you put it all the way down onto the page. He's pretty fun. He's adorable. He's adorable. So there we go. We got him done. Okay, and then real quick, if you want to do an alligator, you get this fun nose, some big eyes. Spiky back, big tail that comes around here. Oh, that tail needs to be sharper. And then that ridge would meet up with up here. And, uh, See where my hand is on my pen. We give him a big hook here. <laughs> this guy's gonna look really silly. He does look really silly. But that's the cool thing about this, is that you can make it look as silly as you want to. And just enjoy, you know, enjoy the process. Have fun with it. Make that good there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water down here. Now we can also take our India ink. You know, and this is just kind of before we decide to add color to it, if we decide to add color to it at all. The India ink does help out with the shading quite a bit. I'm just using a fine point paintbrush um, it's best if you, you know, use something that you have a little bit of control with. I will be using some smaller paint brushes in the video, um, but that's because I'm trying to do, you know, detail work with that, so. We'll put a little bit more water down on him and see if we can't get some fun, um, again, it's going to depend on what paper you use, how much that ink is going to move. fun scales I 
I think the one I did on YouTube turned out a little bit better, but you know, if I were to come in with my green paint over the top of this, cover this up. Green. Let's go with lime green because that's what he should be. Now, warm colors. I'm just going to give you a rule of thumb here. Warm colors are where the sunlight's going to be hitting them. And then do a little bit darker color where the uh, shadow would hit him. Move this out of the way here. And you can do it all in one color or you can really, you know, this is where we get to play. You know, kids are so lucky that they, they don't feel like they have to make something perfect every time. And that's kind of what I want you guys to, to work towards is, is, you know, right now we don't want to think too much about things. Um, playing is supposed to be our solace and our happiness. So take advantage of that. You know. Let's try to enjoy. Let's see if I get these back legs here. So now you don't have to have India ink. I could just be using some black paint and it would be just fine for those shadow areas. You know, bring in blues for the part that's gonna be behind or underneath. Um, Let's see, this is going to be a little bit in the shadow. And this is going to be a little bit in the background. It's kind of a fun color to layer over the top of them, isn't it? Now let's grab some yellow. Now, do you have to do this with watercolor? No, you just do it with whatever medium you want to. You could do it with gouache, you could do it with acrylics. I use acrylics in my book for the final, you know, for the final piece. But you could very easily do this with uh, just watercolor. Use what you got. Now, if you're looking for a good watercolor set, I do like the Arteza because it's uh, relatively inexpensive and you get a lot of colors and it works well. Um, the nice thing about the Arteza acrylic set is, again, you get a lot of colors and um, the paint is nice. It's not the highest quality. It's not like a professional grade. But when we're doing mixed media, this works out great. Okay, so I'm gonna put some splatters on these kids. <clears throat> I'm gonna paint my anteater purple because I just can't resist. I just can't resist painting them. And you can work it right into those grays that you already have down there. It's pretty fun. Okay, I think I want to go with a little bit warmer blue. That one's actually very uh, thick. Not the color I expected. But we're just adding a little color into them. We're going to put a little more blue under his butt. Now, if you come up with a creature that you really think is awesome and you want to use him in your book, well, go for it. Because uh, all you have to do is cut these guys out. And you can collage with them, and they'd be super fun, just like we did with our uh, Build-A-Doodles. Cut them out and use them in our books. So this would actually be a very safe way for you to practice the animal before just going into your book. And that way, there's no messing up. So if you're afraid of messing up, there's no excuse. No excuse at all. Oh, he's adorable. Um, I'm thinking 
You should always have a piece of paper towel right here. I am. Um, <clears throat> Mine are over there, and I don't want to interrupt my process right at this second because it just makes for a time that I have to edit out <clears throat> of the video, and I'd rather just give it to you as is. Oh, he's so cute. So cute. Give him a little bit of warmth up top. Probably should do that. No, no, we'll just leave it like that. I don't want to. So the way that you create mud is that you mix colors that are opposite on the color wheel. Color wheel. If you want to make a brown, mix these two colors together. Um, you know, add blue or add, you know, let's just go with yellow here. You add purple to yellow to get brown. But basically, <clears throat> you could take any of these three colors and mix any of those types of colors, and except for the red. So, you know, if you mix opposite colors on the color wheel, you're going to make mud. That's just how it is. So, like right there, it got a little muddy. That's okay though, because you know, why can't he be kind of brown in there too? He can be a little brown. Yeah. Yeah, he can. So, um, one other tool that you can use here that I will be using quite a bit <clears throat> is my Signo Uniball. Uh, UM-153. I believe you can find it down in my Amazon links. I'll make sure that it's posted in there. And then you can start to add once it's dry. That's still not dry. And that's still not dry. So this is mixed media paper it takes a while. Or there's one of these that don't work and the other one that does. Could have just picked up the one that doesn't work. So we're making just kind of a highlight right in here. Or his eyeball. And I want to see if I can make that eye just nice and bright white. There we go. So much fun. Now, the whites are water soluble also. So, just, you know, you can use gesso to do that. You can use. Um, you know, with your paintbrush. You could probably use like a titanium white if you wanted to. But, yeah, you just have a ton of options. And, um, he's super adorable. Whoop. All right, guys. Now, um, I think I'll do it in a separate video because these took a little bit longer to show you how to do. Oh gosh, we're at 30 minutes. So in a separate video, you'll see the page that I've made. Maybe we'll do that. Uh, maybe we'll do the page on Saturday and do this on Wednesday, kind of our practice. So what I wanted, what I want to see is I want to see you guys going over to Messy Hand Band of Artists. And I want to see your little fun creatures that you come up with with an A name. I think that would just be a blast to see. I would love for you guys to join along with this and um, really have as much fun with it as I think I am going to have with the project. I'm really looking forward to it. So, all right, guys, there are your animals. And, of course, you could do, <clears throat> you could do an aphid. You could do... Anything you wanted to. Just kind of practice your little, your little dudes. They're totally awesome dudes. We're just going to go back through and kind of redefine some of these. Keep it loose. Loosey goosey. So much fun. Okay, guys, I hope you have a great day and uh, we will chat soon.